I'm excited to be here with all of you. Thanks so much to the organizers of this event and to Victor and Samantha for those wonderful keynotes. My brain is already buzzing with ideas. Um, so I'll just jump into the lightning talk. So in a 2012, January 2012 YouTube video, Tony Diaz, a Houston-based author, activist, and professor, announced the birth of a new protest movement called Libro Traficante, a Spanish neologism that means book trafficker or book smuggler. In this YouTube video, Diaz stands before cardboard boxes full of contraband books, including Sandra Cisneros' The House on Mango Street, Juno Diaz's The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow, and Sherman Alexie's Ten Little Indians. These books, along with more than 70 others, were previously taught within a Mexican-American studies program in Tucson, Arizona. But they became contraband when, in 2010, Arizona legislators passed House Bill 2281, which specifically targeted and effectively eliminated the popular academically successful program. The law forbid public school districts from including any classes that promote the overthrow of the United States government, promote resentment toward a race or class of people, are designed primarily for, for pupils of a particular ethnic group, or advocate ethnic solidarity instead of the treatment of pupils as individuals. After the Tucson school, school district was forced to eliminate its Mexican American Studies program in January 2012, administrators then came into classrooms and physically removed the books that were taught as part of this curriculum, most of them by and about Latinx people. This cens censorship is what angered Tony Diaz from a thousand miles away and inspired him to launch the Libro Traficante movement along with Liana Lopez, Brian Paras, Lupe Mendez, and Laura Acosta. The movement decided to establish underground libraries in Arizona, Texas, and New Mexico, which would circulate the 80 books that were effectively banned by this Arizona law. In March of 2012, they also embarked on a thousand mile caravan from Houston to San Antonio, to El Paso, to Albuquerque, to Tucson, where they inaugurated the underground libraries, organized teaching workshops, and put on large public readings, featuring many of the banned authors, including Sandra Cisneros. So I'm exploring the Libro Traficante protesters and movement in the third chapter of my dissertation, and I'm interested in the movement as um, being a representation of networked readers, people who are sharing literature with each other um, within, within different kinds of networks. But in addition to this chapter, I am also building a companion interactive web map that more broadly charts the course of the 2012 Libro Traficante caravan, which I'm hoping can be explored alongside my chapter or explored separately. So what I've designed so far is an interactive story map, uh, a narrative that you can scroll through, which as you scroll takes you to different points along the caravan. Um, and I'll just show you a prototype of this web map, which has not been published yet. It's, it's still a work in progress. Um, so here's the most zoomed out view where you can see all the stops along the 2012 caravan. And on the right side, there's information about each of the stops and also images and YouTube videos. Um, social media and self-documentation was really important to the caravan. And so that's something that I really wanted to try to capture with this map um, to blend the physical and the digital. And if you scroll along through the, the map, um, it takes you to each of the points, so you can see, zooming into this protest rally that happened in front of the Alamo Chapel. Um, and ideally, you can also click on different points in the map and be taken to that, um, to that bit of information. Um, So like I said, this is a work in progress. So to conclude, um, I'd like to offer up a few questions that I've been thinking about um, as I move forward developing this map. So how can I incorporate more information about the underground libraries, the banned books, and the authors of the banned books? How can I, and this is trickier, best represent the theoretical and historical claims of the movement as far as it explicitly challenged and troubled the making and the mythology of US geographical borders? Uh, 
And then more broadly, I think these are some questions that resonate across with other kinds of digital projects, especially web-based projects or projects that are interested or invested in social justice or communities. Um, who is this digital tool for? Who's actually going to use this thing that I'm creating? Scholars, teachers, students, activists. How might I identify who those potential users are and how can I survey and address their needs? Um, these are questions that we're not totally used to asking all the time, I think, in digital humanities work, or at least in literary studies where I'm being trained right now. Um, and then most importantly, how can I best involve the Libro Traficante movement in the continued development of this map? I've been emailing Tony Diaz as I've been writing my chapter, but I'd really like to incorporate Tony's feedback and feedback from other members of the movement um, as I continue working on it. So I'd be really eager to hear feedback or suggestions during the Q&A and to, to continue thinking with all of you. Thank you.